very warm welcome to you to this channel and of course this is a different channel this is art and media law by me the black belt barrister and alan robert shaw so i hope you are as pleased to join us on this new channel as we are as pleased to bring it to you as the name suggests uh, art and media law so all sorts of cases and legal trivia to do with art and media and the law that underpins them and of course the cases and uh, how to approach such cases uh, we'll be covering all sorts of different things, um, not least of which uh, music and copyright and even trademarks and things like that. So all of your questions and queries and interests hopefully will be uh, addressed on this channel. So please do make sure you subscribe and um, hit that bell icon just as you would usually do for all of my normal videos that I am so very grateful for. I'm very pleased to say we now have at the time of recording so you can actually jump in at the very early stages. I am pleased to say that we already have 181 subscribers. We passed the first 100 during a live stream just the other day. Um, I'm very pleased about that. So some of you were among the first 100. You heard it here first. So hopefully uh, you will find this channel very, very interesting with um, myself and uh, Alan Robertshaw Esquire. Uh, both of us are barristers of England and Wales, but of course copyright and um, media and art law is somewhat international and universal. Not entirely, but certainly a lot of the principles uh, stretch across the globe. And so in this video, I thought I'd just talk to you briefly about um, one such dispute that I was embroiled in. Um, I've been embroiled in a number of disputes. This one was a, a personal one. Um, of course, I'm often representing clients, but this one was a personal one. So for this one here, I actually did a breakdown of one of the BBC's programs uh, called Silk, episode uh, one of season one. And essentially, this program is about life at the bar. It focuses predominantly on uh, life as a criminal barrister. But nonetheless, I found it to be um, a very interesting program to watch. And a lot of it's accurate. And there are a few things that are um, not 100% uh, accurate in there. This um, video was essentially a, a breakdown, a teardown of that episode. So this is the program here. And so I went through this first episode and I scored it with edu points I put on here. This was obviously some time ago now. Um, educational points versus inaccuracies. And I won't spoil it as to how many there were by the end, but um, it had a good start. So I essentially took the uh, content of this video. I watched it, recorded it, painstakingly went through and commented on those bits that were accurate and those bits that perhaps were slightly inaccurate. So some learning points and some points that they could perhaps have improved on. And so this video was only um, just under 10 minutes long. The episode, I think they're about an hour long, I forget now, about 45 minutes to an hour or something like that. So quite clearly with my commentary, you can see that it was certainly not the full episode uh, showed in here. Nonetheless, when I published this, I had a copyright claim by the BBC, um, but also it warrants um, mentioning that I did contact the BBC to say this is the video that I'm going to do. This is um, essentially their content that I'm going to use to base my video on for uh, fair use exemption under copyright law. Fair use is generally if you're providing some kind of educational content, critique or something like that, then there is a fair use. Uh, YouTube doesn't like to get involved in fair use disputes, but they do provide a mechanism for um, people and companies to claim copyright to other material. And there's a whole process which I do explain. Long story short, uh, the BBC essentially replied to say, we don't usually um, withdraw copyright claims on these things. And in my view, that's somewhat wrong because what they should really do is review the material properly and then decide whether or not they should withdraw it. But instead they said they don't. Um, so initially they didn't withdraw it. I had to file um, an appeal and I also contacted the lawyers in the meantime and said, here's the legal basis for my appeal. If you reject or you fight my appeal, I will file a counter notice, um, which essentially means that 
my video will be reinstated pending um, any evidence from the BBC um, that they filed a court claim to um, challenge my copyright use um, under the fair use exemption. Um, they didn't, um, they saw sense, I'm pleased to say, they didn't challenge my appeal and the uh, video remained um, in place. Um, and so just as a aside from that, I then also did another video. Uh, this also was some time ago um, about my BBC copyright dispute and how to dispute YouTube copyright claims, because I found it extremely unfair that um, companies will challenge these um, videos on the basis of copyright when, of course, there is a fair use element to it. Now, I'm not talking about where some people have re-uploaded my videos 100% as their video and added nothing to it whatsoever. That is not fair use. But where some people, um, either positively or negatively, have taken a snippet of my videos and put it into theirs, um, mostly positive, I'm pleased to say, but um, the odd negative one creeps in now and again, uh, which is fine. People are free to disagree with me. I've never, ever said that people should agree with everything that I ever say. Um, but those are obviously fair use, subject to the amount of my video that they use and what they add to my video. If it's simply somebody sitting there watching my video and then at the end say, well, that was great, that's obviously not fair use. My version on this BBC video here was to give you my professional educational view on the episode, what I felt was accurate, slightly inaccurate, so that you, the viewer, take essentially the value from me, not a replacement for watching the original show. It may even encourage you to watch the original show, and personally I think the BBC was a little bit short-sighted by uh, not uh, supporting that, because as it was, I just felt like I couldn't really be bothered to do all of the rest because I didn't want to go through this argument time and time again. Um, that in itself, I think, is a shame because I think it would have benefited you. Let me know if you want me to do the rest of those. There are lots of them. Um, I think that it would have been a very educational, very interesting uh, thing to do. Maybe I will do the, the rest again. I do have uh, a, a copy of the, the, the full, there's three series. I've got all three series. Uh, lots of episodes. I think it would be very interesting to do each of those. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. But this was just a brief overview, essentially, of um, what happens, what we face as creators when we are uh, producing content. We get these claims, silly claims, really, um, against our content, trying to take down the content on the basis that it's copyrighted. Of course, the original material is copyrighted, but there are fair use exemptions, and this indeed was one of them. So I hope you found that an, an interesting insight to uh, some of the things that we face. Do I will link both of these videos in the description below. Please feel free to go and watch those. But uh, the main point of this video was really to uh, tease you in to um, become interested in subscribing to this channel, get interested in this channel. And um, Mr. Robert Shaw and I will be very grateful. We are currently at 181 subscribers. Um, let's see how long it takes us to get our first thousand and uh, we will both be very pleased indeed. So with that, I thank you very much for watching this video. Please do like the video and subscribe as always. And of course, thank you for watching.